to where I, I think that the Dragons probably respected. You're right, buddy. I um, I, I thought the um. Yeah, I, I thought they ball watched a little bit too much. I think they over respected the Warriors a little mm. bit, and I think they stepped back out of the game a little bit and started watching the Warriors and kind of didn't have any answers and how to stop it. I, I'm I'm sure during the week that they were talking about how to how to nullify the Warriors um, when they did get rolling, and mm. they were so aware of it that when it did start happening, they kind of got caught in the blinkers a little bit. Um, look, look, it was hard to watch even for a neutral. Yeah, yeah I, tw- I tweeted some nice things about the Warriors during the game, but that was just because I'm excited to see the Warriors playing so well. Um, you can't do that this week, Kurt, mate. You'll, nah, you'll, nah, you'll, nah. You'll, you'll, you'll get beheaded if you start saying nice things about Cronulla on, on nah, Thursday. I'm not, so, I'm, not sold on, <laughs> I'm not sold on Cronulla yet anyway, so don't worry about that. But um, I, 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 The Warriors are an awesome team, but I think the Dragons did make it really easy for them. I, I, I thought the Warriors were travelling okay going into half time, but apparently... When they got into the sheds, that Andrew Webster put an absolute rocket up them, um, which is a, a a clear difference between where these two teams are at. I don't know what Ryan Carl was saying at halftime, but I, I guarantee he wasn't, you know, uh, blowing his biscuit. Um, so the Warriors came out in the second half. Um, I, I spoke about last week, Sean Johnson's um, ability to get this team around the field, um, and, and the fact that Tyrrell Sloan was going to have to be perfect. And and I keep saying this over and over. Sloan got his highlight real moment in the first half. Looked yeah. great. Um, but disappointing again defensively. Yeah. Um, out of position a few times. But when he was in position, one example there, uh, he got trampled by, I think it was Montoya maybe, and the Warriors score anyway. It, it's basic stuff. But the team and Sloan still aren't getting those fundamentals right. But then – the, the, the now, competing is, it sounds like it's a lazy word to use. I hate using competing. I wish there was another word that I could use um, on this podcast, but but it is real layman stuff that they're not getting things right. And and when you are coming up against a team, and, and realistically, I, I think the Warriors are a legitimate top four team that are now producing away from home because of that time they spent um, in Queensland in COVID. They're okay now traveling from Auckland to Sydney or, or Australia every second week, the the, the Warriors are, are, are a great football team. And I just thought the Dragons were just, just watching. I, I, yeah. I just thought, yeah, when, you know, and it's split second stuff when if you're coming up in a line, particularly when you're worried about DWZ, who I said on Twitter is the form winger. If he's the form winger in the NRL, he's the form winger on the planet. So it, when the ball comes that way, it only takes a split second for your, Second rower or your inside centre to not come up together. That that one split second of hesitation to go forward, and you buckle your line and show the opposition a, a gap. The the Warriors are the type of team where they can go, all right, well we can go short, we can bring these guys in a little bit more and, and punch them out the back, which they did several several times. Um, it, it's impossible to stop the Warriors like that, but the Dragons didn't yeah. give themselves a chance because they just got stuck. And yeah, they they look like they would, they, you know, they, they would. You know, the the backups to a wedding they were never supposed to go to. And, mm. uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that's even a saying. But, yeah, not good. It, it wasn't a good performance. And, and I feel sorry for Dragons fans. But I think there needs to be some realism. And, and fans need to get realistic. I, I You know, there's been some good signs in this team. But there's, there's far more issues they need to sort out before they become a, a week-to-week prospect of, of giving you guys some some light or, or some, you know, consistency and make you guys feel better about going to work on a Monday morning. It's just that simple. There's a reason why they are where they are on, on the ladder and there's a reason why the Warriors uh, are where they are. Um, but, but as usual, in a game which continues to slide out of the Dragons' hands, they don't know how to pull it back over longer periods to keep themselves in games. The, the left side defense has been a real cause for concern in recent weeks and it got exposed badly. Obviously, um, yeah, DWZ bagging four tries. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you that if you just look at the look at the score sheet. But uh, Matt Fierne and Moses Suli and, and, and Jack Bird, who I think was on, on that edge as well, they just looked all at sea, didn't they? How, how have you analyzed that that left side left side defense? Because, yeah, Matt Fierne, he's really struggled um, 
out on out on the wing there, especially especially defensively. I, I think the defensive issues aren't just aren't just to, uh, according to him. It's 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 across the field. You look at the other side, and, and Ravalar and Lomax aren't much better. But uh, that would that left hand side, and I'm, I'm sure that's what Cronulla have been working on in video work throughout the week. And I guarantee that Jesse Ramian and uh, or Ramian and and Sione Katoa, they're going to be getting plenty of balls sent their way. I reckon on Thursday night. Yeah, and the other thing that springs to mind is that last few minutes against South Sydney. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago at Cogra, it's the same thing, but it just happened a lot quicker at Cogra. Um, I, I, if you remember that article I wrote a few weeks ago, potentially shopping out some of your bigger names to, to free up space in your cap, and there was a few replies, and rightly so at the time, and I kind of didn't read anything to it, but there's, they're like, what about the Fene boys as well? Um I, I'm starting to lean that way too. I, I think they're on the chopping block as well. Um, i, I I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know why they, they can't get it together. You, you look at some other teams and some other guys that are coming along at, at where their development is in teams and even below them that are younger and played less games. They're making better reads defensively than, mm. than the Fino guys. So I, I think there's some value in keeping them because you can't just sack everyone and have no. zero players for next year. You, you need to kind of pick and choose and be a little bit strategic but I'm starting to fall into the same bracket as a lot of Dragons fans and say, what what are these kids doing? Because they're, they're not kids anymore. I, I, I'm no, not without looking at their, how many games have they played now? I, I don't know if you can bring that up quickly while I buy a couple of seconds, but they, they, they seem to struggle when the chips are down. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the better teams or, or the teams that are improving around the Dragons are moving up the ladder and being better week to week. The kids on the outside are, are making the guys inside them better because they're making decisions and they move up together and they, they, they defend defensively. They, they do it together. And I think even if when they hold their line, you can still see there's individuals in that line next to each other. Case in point was it's, um, that Dolphins game where Mark Nichols yeah. scored. And DeBellin and Jack Bird were sitting there and they didn't even look at each other. So if that's happening with Bird and De- DeBellin in the middle of the field, what chance does Finay have with whoever's inside him or outside him or the Fine, sorry, um, when they're trying to defend on the outside, when when there's chaos happening all around them, it, um, it yeah, it, it's tough. 40, Forty-three games for Matt Matt Fine now. Okay, well, that, well, that's okay. So he's seven games away from playing fifty first-grade NRL games, mm. and that's fifty more than some players ever get to see, um, let alone get to the NRL. So uh, there are there are really big holes defensively in both their games where after 43 games, the club needs to start thinking how much how much juice are we going to get out of this squeeze and how, how long, how patient are we? Or is it as simple as give them another shot under Flanagan, which I, I think mm. you might see happen anyway. Yeah, like I, I tend to agree with you. Like the performances haven't been up to scratch, but you can't also throw everyone on, onto the scrap heap. And, and, and who knows, maybe it's that coaching kind of coming up through the levels. But I remember seeing Matt Fierne on debut against the Bulldogs and he looked amazing. So yeah, I don't know whether it's the fact being under Anthony Griffin and now being under an interim coach, but we'll be willing to give these guys a, an opportunity. But I also kind of am of the, the thinking and the opinion as well, Kurt, that yeah, yeah, you can invest in someone for, 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 for only so long. Once someone's played 50, 60, 70, 80 first grade games, yet you've kind of got to wake up to yourself and think, well, are they, uh, is, is it just been poor coaching? Is it lack of confidence or is it the fact that they just don't necessarily have the ability to be able to push on and, and really contribute to, uh, to a side collecting, collecting a victory? I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be intriguing viewing, probably worrying viewing. I think for for Dragons fans come come Thursday night because uh, yeah, that left side defence has been has been a horrible um, of late. Could I, I tweeted this after after the game, and I was just kind of disappointed. Uh, probably isn't the right word. It's more more than disappointment, uh, frustrated, annoyed, angry. Uh, just at the, the the basic fundamentals that the Dragons are so awful at. Um, again, there was a short dropout um, where the Dragons um, should have won possession back and they didn't. Uh, it seems to the Dragons, if there's ten short dropouts, the the opposition will get it eight or nine times out of ten. Uh, just just basic errors are coming out of their own end. Um, defensive issues yet like. The, I don't want to go too much into the analysis of the defense of Ravalawa and Lomax, but there was one occasion and, and 
for some reason, uh, somehow the Warriors didn't score off it. But Ravalawa was actually inside of Lomax. He was about four or five men in field. Now, it's fine to, to shoot it off your, off your wing if you can take the man with the ball. It ends up being a great defensive decision. But there's probably two or three times a game where Ravalawa rushes off his wing and, and finds, uh, well, he doesn't find himself, but the Dragons find themselves with with a one-on-three overlap and, and more more times than, than not, the opposition is, is scoring. So just... Errors, um, handling errors, the defensive issues. Is this basically what we just have to accept until Flanagan, Flanagan comes? Kurt, is it, is it unrealistic to expect